Cuatlicue. The being that represents Mother Earth in prehispanic mythology. She is a symbol as powerful as it is profound. This deity personifies our own planet, the Earth itself. From this perspective, it is absurd to think that the Spanish were frightened by these and other figures that reflect the art of these Asian cultures. Now, the reaction of the Spanish can be understood when considering their European view that did not recognize the earth as a living entity. Unlike how some of these cultures and their descendants continue to value the earth to this day. To highlight this erroneous European view, let us turn to the Bible. In Genesis we read, God, in the beginning, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God made the domestic animals the white animals, and all the reptiles according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and said, Let us make mankind in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the domestic animals, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Here we see the establishment of a clear hierarchy, where human beings are considered superior to the rest of creation. It is evident that the European worldview, even today, tends to see the earth as a mere resource for our use and enjoyment. In contrast, on these sides of the planet we appreciate the differences in how we see and value it. For example, the word Tonantzin refers our Venerable Mother, highlighting the deep and reverential connection we had with the Earth. This discrepancy in the perception of the Earth is significant, as it reflects different ways of relating to our natural environment while the European view places us in a role of dominance and control. In many cultures later referred to as indigenous, they recognize the interdependence and reciprocity between human beings and the earth, not considering it merely as a creation of Ometeotl that we can exploit at will. It is important to recognize the common patterns that most human beings have in relation to the earth. Throughout history and in various civilizations, there has been a quest to understand the unknown, everything that exists in the universe and that, with our limited human intelligence, we cannot fully comprehend or explain. Why? We appreciate a clear difference between the vision of the Bible, which regards the earth as a thing, and the vision of indigenous groups that recognize it as a living being capable of feeling, seeing, breathing, giving and taking away. Both perspectives, whether we want to or not, place the human being in a place of honor. For we have always believed that we are the center of everything, and the Bible emphasizes this. Regardless of the scientific evidence that proves the existence of millions of species before the appearance of human beings, the Bible grants a privileged place to man, created by God, while everything else that he created serves him. On the other hand, the worldview of pre groups differs in that aspect, 
However, they also tended to humanize what they did not fully understand. This line of thought is a subject of debate in fields of anthropology and sociology, where human beings create gods with human physical characteristics. This theory of humanizing the phenomena of the universe suggests that human beings tend to attribute human characteristics and forms to deities, as it is easier to them to relate to and interact with entities that resemble themselves. Thus, anthropomorphic representation of gods, divinities, essences, spirits, or whatever they might be called, are created. And because of this, we later believe in the existence of an old man in the sky, who created everything and sent his son to die for the forgiveness of sins. Viejito in turn, a copy of the Zeus invented by the Greeks, who indulged in as many women as he could, attributing to him virtues and very human flaws. The Egyptians also had beings that were half human, half animal. Among the Norse we have Odin, and in our cultures the same occurred. Wherever we look we see humanized beings, in codices, sculptures, stories, and bas reliefs, whether they are human or somorphic representing Tlaloc. Tezcatlipoca, the moon, a hummingbird, a jaguar, and of course, Quatlique herself, who, although is humanized for better understanding, obviously, these anthropomorphic forms are more evident in the other two Quatliques, where we clearly see human bodies, human hands that except for our primate cousins, no other animal possesses. We observe long arms, elbows, and stylized human arts, heads with all the characteristics of a human being, dropping breasts of a woman. In short, prehispanic art also took on the task of humanizing. However, when seen in this way by Europeans, it caused repulsion. Obviously, in the main and most famous Quatlique, it is more difficult to distinguish that humanization, but we still perceive it. For we can appreciate two legs. Ice gear, of which we will see its symbol later. Obviously, it is a human garment. A neck lens, palms of hands, human braces, two elongated arms, and even though it appears decapitated, obviously, there would be a human head, like in the other Quatlique that we know. We went from a circular planet, although I'm not sure if they knew it had that shape, to a being that combines animal, human and natural phenomena aspects. However, despite this, its creation was necessary for an audience that would venerate and worship it. Now, let's delve into its terrifying aspect. Yes, it is our mother earth, it's not just a piece of land, but because this is how we see it today, it's the reason why we are destroying it to the detriment of the entire human race, although, of course, it is capable of withstanding that and more, as it can perfectly endure what we are currently doing to it.
In comparison, the planet has already experienced natural disasters infinitely greater than the damage we are inflicting upon it. But here is where the European perspective coincides somewhat with the fear of these groups, for the dual aspect permits it. It represents life and death, but not only that, it also encompasses the masculine and the feminine, and as another clear example of duality. We find it is an additional part that was carved into it, located at the same base. This piece, although it was carved, was never seen by observers, which seems illogical to us today. Who would create something that was not meant to be seen? However, for these cultures it was perfectly normal, because on the base of the monolith there was a relief of Tlaloc Tlaltecutli, the lord of the earth and the terrestrial water, personified in its feet. Thus, in it we find the fusion of the feminine with Quatlique and the masculine with Laltecutli, and as we delve into the aspect of fear and respect. We, nowadays, truly live comfortably to a certain extent. Even despite the COVID pandemic, we have just experienced worldview. However, let's try to imagine those times. Contrary to the idealized perceptions that some people paint of this past today, portraying it as almost idyllic, the truth is that it was a harsher war than ours. The people of that time suffered from droughts, such as the one who was Seuno Aconejo. This drought took place in 1454, in the basin of Mexico. But not only that, in the environment of Coatlicue, which was a Mexican representation, we have other environmental phenomena from other sources. Such as, in the year 10 Rabbit of 1450, there was famine. In 1 Rabbit of 1454, there was famine and disease. In the year 1499, during a Wisotol's ring, where was a flood, when they tried to bring more water from Coyoacán to Tenochtitlan, a Wisotol's works were destroyed by the water, flooding the city. It is said that a Wisotol hit his head during that flood, and later died. 1 Hercules well, of course. This table serves as an example, summarizing the earthquakes recorded in various historical sources, demonstrating that the more recent earthquakes of 1985 and others are not something new. Obviously, we cannot forget the eruptions of Popocatépetl like the ones we are currently witnessing in vivid and full color. There were also epidemics, although not as devastating as smallpox. Today we have rampant crime and organized crime, but back then, as well, an insect or wild animal could attack or beat you causing serious harm or even death. Women had a high risk of dying during childbirth, hence they believed that if they died in their first childbirth, they could become warriors. And many other situations were generated, no less than by the air itself. So, while the satanic European view was not shared, if Quatlique or any of her other manifestations became angry, she could kill, withhold crops, animals for food, and many other damages, of course.
unlike today, where we just have to go to the corner store and our problems are solved. 2. You can see a duality of adoration, respect, but also fear towards Mother Earth. These cultures wished that their mother wouldn't unleash cosmic punishment and teach us a profound lesson in life. It was better to keep peace, is why there were so many celebrations in her honor during the 20 days periods of the year. So, the dual aspect, it is main characteristic. However, in the next video, we will continue to explain more encrypted messages found in the most famous representation of Tonantzin, the mother of all.